Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at Crowbar Collective's Black Mesa, and see how it improves upon the original 1998 masterpiece, Half-Life. Now, obviously there's between 17 to 20 years of graphical evolution that separate these two titles, so we should expect practically everything to be an improvement. So, the focus for this video will be on how exactly Black Mesa improves on the design of the original game, and how these changes have impacted the art direction of the experience. Bear in mind that both games are being played on the PC, with the settings pushed as high as possible at a 1440p resolution. Though, in order to capture clean images to compare, the motion blur settings will be disabled. Also, because the settings are being pushed as high as possible in the Steam version of Half-Life, the HD models will be included for most of this footage, though I'll also show what some of the original models looked like as well, especially when we look at some of the weapons. Alright, so to kick this comparison off, let's first look at a few of the character and object models shared between both games, starting with Gordon Freeman's iconic HEV suit. Right away, we can see a substantial improvement to the complexity of the model, with significantly more polygons, higher resolution textures, and enhanced lighting and shadows to bring out the finer details. The suit itself remains almost the same in terms of aesthetic, only with the silver portions being replaced with black rubber accordion joints, and a velvet interior visible around the neckline. It certainly appears to be a more realized version of the original design, and the iconic Lambda icon is now clearly visible on the breastplate. Next, let's look at some of the various character models around the Black Mesa test facility. As I mentioned before, these were overhauled slightly thanks to an HD model update, adding in higher resolution textures, higher poly counts, and more realistic animations. But these upgrades are minor compared to the much more advanced models used in Black Mesa. This scientist, for example, has seen a number of improvements, including translucent lenses for his glasses, improved color palette to help distinguish between clothing textures, and smoother edges overall. On top of this, the overall NPC variety has been increased, avoiding the immersion-breaking clones found throughout the original. Enemies, for the most part, look about the same. Yes, obviously the textures are higher res and the models have more polygons now, but the general design remains almost completely intact, and their placement throughout the game seems to be consistent all throughout. Now, let's take a brief look at the weapon models. Just like the NPCs, the weapons were given a bit of an overhaul, with some models like the MP5 and Glock being swapped out for an M4A1 and Beretta respectively. Because Black Mesa utilizes the original MP5 and Glock, I'll disable the HD models for this section. Though, not that it really matters, as the weapon models, textures, and animations used in Black Mesa are much more impressive. In fact, each weapon in Black Mesa, when found, has a nice introductory animation that shows Gordon inspecting it, offering an opportunity to appreciate the work that went into recreating them. One of my favorite recreations here is the Gauss Gun. Because the gun is more fictional than the other weapons in the game, Crowbar Collective were able to have a bit more fun with the design. With new shielding and vents over the central copper coil, some new switches and batteries along the receiver, and a repositioned CO2 canister wrapped in tape, with a nice high resolution texture to go along with it. And to top it all off, the weapon now glows blue as it's charging up, giving it the quintessential sci-fi look. The Snark is another great example, as there are a ton of new details to make it appear more like a living organism, with antennas, a crab-like exoskeleton, and new blinking animations that make this little guy hard to use as a deadly weapon without feeling bad about it. Next, let's look at the environments. While the core components of each area remain intact in one way or another, the scaling and layout of each level has been changed drastically. The opening tram ride, for example, is now much longer and features more environments with scripted action happening in the background. The main lobby has also been extended slightly, with a large curved screen now appearing off to the side and a new rounded desk in the central area. One of the most impressive changes, though, comes in the final act of the game where the player is teleported to a mysterious alien world called Zen. This section of Black Mesa has been in development for years now, and only just entered open beta last Friday. And if you want to give it a shot, you can opt into the public beta through Black Mesa's Steam properties. Rather than just recreating the poorly received ending of the original Half-Life, Crowbar Collective took it a step further, and completely redesigned this area, with smoother platforming, new puzzles, and more polished enemy encounters. In the original game, you start off Zen on top of a bunch of floating rocks, and need to awkwardly jump from platform to platform until you reach a larger central section. This floating central island doesn't even appear in Black Mesa's Zen until about 40 minutes in, with new cave networks and swamps offering a greater opportunity to take in the alien world. 
the large boss fight with the huge Gonark creature is now more involved, with larger arenas to fight in, new music, and new scripted encounters, all making the final battle with it even more satisfying. And then there's the lengthy interloper stage, that now feels like a proper alien factory, rather than the confusing mess it was originally. Textures, of course, have also been completely overhauled. The Crowbar Collective appear to have very carefully recreated each and every wall and floor to match the style found in the original title, providing a faithful recreation of the Black Mesa facility and the surrounding canyons. The lighting, on the other hand, is where Crowbar Collective improvised a bit more. The original game's lighting hasn't aged remarkably well, with scenes that should be dark and moody appearing more brightly lit and plain. This has been addressed directly in Black Mesa, making scenes like the aftermath of the Resonance Cascade more horrifying, as the headcrab zombies now shamble through flickering lights and shadow to attack the player. Black Mesa also features some great dynamic lighting effects, allowing for real-time shadow projection from the player's flashlight, and some special lights throughout the game. The original game features a flashlight, but it seems to cast light unrealistically with a spotlight at whatever the player's cursor is aimed at. It worked for the time, but Black Mesa's flashlight behaves more believably, and can even be blocked by objects and enemies standing in the way. There's times where the fancy new bloom effects can be a bit overwhelming, but overall it still serves to add to the atmosphere of the game, and feels consistent with Valve's design. Shadows in the original Half-Life behave mostly the same as the game's lighting, with predetermined dark spots in the environment that never really feel all that dark at all. The air vents are probably the darkest parts of the game, requiring the player to use a flashlight to easily traverse, but Black Mesa's much darker shadows make these vents completely pitch black, allowing headcrabs to more easily sneak up on the player. Black Mesa did have a problem with its real-time shadow effects in a previous update due to some compatibility issue, though at the time of recording this appears to have been resolved and looks great as all objects and characters seem to cast nice, soft shadow effects in the environment, consistent with the distance of the player's torchlight. Now, let's take a look at some effects. Half-Life offers a surprising amount of visual effects, from impressive particles and explosions to water simulation and physics. Black Mesa features many of the same effects, only enhanced with new volumetric lighting and bloom. One of the most impressive sequences is the Resonance Cascade early in the game, that is now expanded upon greatly, with more lightning bolts, a new screen shake effect, and some extra explosions for good measure. Fire effects, that surprisingly seem to be mostly absent from the original Half-Life, now play a major role in Black Mesa, with large flames blocking paths and lighting enemies ablaze. Players can even toss flares at enemies to deal damage, an option that was initially planned for the first Half-Life, but ultimately shelved until Half-Life 2 Episode 1. Explosions are now much more impressive, as fireballs are not only rendered at a higher resolution, but now also cause the environment to light up around the area of detonation. The same is true for the Gluon Gun, whose bright blue energy beam now lights up the point of contact, and even leaves burn mark decals on the wall. Oddly enough, there is a small detail that seems to be missing from Black Mesa that was in the original, the particle effects from the Gauss Gun. Upon contact with a wall in Half-Life, the Gauss Gun's energy beam will cause sparks to emit from the wall, that fades soon after. The new Gauss Gun doesn't do this, even with a charged up shot. It's possible this was done in order to more clearly communicate to the player that the Gauss Gun's ammunition can penetrate walls, though I'm not entirely sure. Finally, let's listen to a few sound comparisons. Which game do you think has the better overall sound design?
debugging procedure coming along. And that wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. The Crowbar Collective has spent years with their Black Mesa project, and now that Zen has finally released, it seems as though their hard work and dedication has greatly paid off. Black Mesa is a faithful recreation of Half-Life that keeps all of the beloved environments and layouts intact while also improving on the less popular aspects of the 1998 classic, especially the Zen stages. All of the characters, weapons, and objects have been redesigned to take advantage of the more powerful Source Engine, and the new implementation of the advanced physics utilized in Half-Life 2 and Half-Life Source allow for some fantastic puzzle-solving opportunities, and impressive set pieces that the original game simply can't deliver. Also, the improved lighting and shadows help to more accurately depict the events of the story, without harming the flow of the gameplay experience. But what do you guys think? Do you think Black Mesa's visual and audio design offer the ultimate Half-Life experience? Or do you still prefer the style of the original? Let me know in the comments section. Also, I want to officially confirm that I will be switching over to doing this full-time, meaning you can expect higher quality videos coming at a much more consistent rate. If you like the stuff I do here, and want to support me and the channel, please consider donating using the Patreon link in the description. Your help will be greatly appreciated. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos posted every week.